Okay, so today we're going to try and fit some new lighting equipment and horn to the R1250GS. Um, we're using the Denali product, so Denali Soundbomb Compact Horn, the one-piece one, not the split one, um, which will fit up between the forks, and we have a mounting bracket for that, and also a pair of D4 four-piece LED uh, lights, and these are like so. Um, we have already the Denali Can Smart uh, CAN bus system in place on the bike, which we'll show you a little bit later. Um, but this comes with a two foot uh, wiring extension from the single light and obviously two foot from the other light. But if you purchase the Denali uh, CAN Smart, you'll find that that actually comes with all the wiring for two sets of lights, the sound bomb horn and a rear light all in the kit and as I say we'll show you that a little bit later when we get out by the bike. Okay so here's the bike it's a 2018 November 2018 R1250 GS so the brand new model um, and as I say we're going to be fitting a pair of D4 Denali uh, spotlights and we're also going to be fitting the sound bomb horn because the original BMW one is is pretty pathetic um, so we'll we'll crack on. The first thing we're going to do is to remove the seat, obviously the pillion seat and the rider seat. Um, we're then going to need to remove the top panel of the tank, the side panels of the tank, the beacon front fairing, the side fairings, um, and then when we get into here we'll remove the plastic fuel tank and probably the air box as well so that we can route the wires through. I'm not going to be showing you every twist and turn because um, obviously a lot of it is just wanting to see where I've routed the wires but certainly we'll plow on through with the installation and uh, see how we go. So first thing we want to do is remove the seats. A lot of people seem to struggle with removing the pillion seat but that's the pillion seat off and there's the rider seat off. Uh, you'll see this is the can smart, the actual can smart unit is here. Um, which I've just tucked up under here and that daisy chains um, by taking the plug from the tyre pressure controller here um, so basically the plug from the easy can or the sorry the uh, can smart goes into the plug here this is the plug that was originally in the um, tyre pressure monitor and obviously the other plug from the can smart goes into that. So effectively the can smart is receiving its CAN bus signals from the uh, system via the tire pressure monitor. We're also going to run, or we have run, the power cables for the uh, can smart all the way underneath the seat brackets here, making sure that we're clear of anything that may push backwards or forwards and we're moving that all the way down and round to here and the battery compartment which is down here so so that's already actually connected um, but we're now going to be threading the wires through the system making sure that we avoid everything hot and we avoid everything that's moving and we avoid trapping the wires um, and hopefully we'll end up with a with a fairly clean install um, where we won't see too much of the supplementary wiring. So the first thing we're going to do is remove the battery cover. For that we need a Torx 25 screw. Now just be aware that with the cover here there's a pip here into which it's pushed. That can sometimes get a bit stiff. Um, so I've applied a little bit of um, grease to the rubber there, which just helps that to come off freely. And then there's a little peg at the bottom here that you've got to clear just so you don't snap anything off. So this one, as you can see, plugs off fairly easily because I've added a little bit of grease to it. And then it lifts off this connection here at the bottom. So you have a peg here and you have a push there with a Torx 25 screw here. I like to leave the screws where I can in place because they are of different lengths and some of them do have a shoulder on them so this one for example um, has a small shoulder here so I like to try and leave those in place actually in the panels if I can if not just push them into a piece of expanded polystyrene and perhaps right next to them where the screw goes 
So as you can see, we already fitted the CAN Smart unit. Um, this is the motorcycle battery. Um, so to remove the battery, all we would do is simply lift this off its two lugs at the bottom. Um, and then this item here has a peg on the bottom. So again, you have to lift it and it clears the pegs at the side and clears the pegs at the bottom. I'm not going to do anything with that because I don't need to. Um, you can see I've connected the negative from the CAN Smart into here and the positive into the positive post here. Um, and the fuse unit for the smart can is now just here resting on top of the battery and that goes over the top so it holds it all neatly but the fuse is then easily um, accessible so quite a ni nice neat installation for the can smart power supply uh, but I will just obviously put that back in because I have no need to remove that at this particular juncture um, we may disconnect the battery later of course if you're disconnecting the battery make sure you disconnect the negative first the positive last and when reconnecting the positive first and the negative last um, and then you'll avoid too many issues so we need now to remove the seat adjuster so push this forward and simply remove it like so so we're now going to remove this bottom fairing piece just here um, on the motorcycle. We'll do exactly the same the other side, but obviously I'll only show you the one side because the other side is identical, uh, whatever you do. So again, it's Torx 25. So we just remove that with our Torx 25 screwdriver, like so. Number one, and again, this one, for example, is a much longer screw than any of the previous ones. So just make sure that you keep those in the right place. And then remove the bottom one, like so, again a long one, but this just pulls forward and then backwards to remove it from the two lugs, one lug here and one lug goes into this peg joint here, so, so it needs to be pulled backwards. Again, I would just replace those screws into their respective holes in that piece of fairing and put that aside as is. Now you can see here we've got the two tank screws here, Torx 25. There's also two screws here at the front of the tank and one in the center. The one in the center I believe is slightly larger, probably a Torx 30 or a Torx 35. We'll remove the first ones considering we have the camera here. So again, just remove these like so. Now again, you'll notice that these particular ones, whilst again they're Torx 25, they are collarless and they are shorter than the ones that are in the fairing. So that's the reason that we try and keep these in place wherever we can. And what I might do once I've got this off is actually put them back in their hole there. But for the time being, I'll just keep those in the pocket. Okay, so we've now moved to the front of the tank and we can see that there's a couple of, couple of screws here that we need to remove. Again, Torx 25. And then interestingly, these ones are short, but they do have a collar. So this is why I say it's very, very important to decide where you, what you're gonna do with the screws so you keep them all into place. So I'm just gonna take the one off the other side, but you'll obviously uh, just be here when I get back. Okay, so we're now uh, back from doing the other side. So I have now both of those fasteners, the shoulder ones go at the front, um, so I have both of those, and you'll notice here there is a Torx 30 or a Torx 30, 35 fastener right Yeah, so throughout I've been saying they were Torx 25. Actually, all of the ones I've taken out to now are Torx 20. Uh, this one is a Torx 35, um, and again, it has a shoulder, but it's considerably different, so it can only really go in one place. Okay, so this is the point at which bravery comes into place, because it's a brand new motorcycle and nobody wants to damage their brand new motorcycle. But actually, the fuel tank, uh, or the fuel cap, is not part of this plastic trim here. 
So what we do is we pull it from the bottom, slide our fingers up gradually underneath, so you can see my fingers now going under, and it should just gradually just ease it up, and it should pop like so. So it's now come off all of its little spring fittings, um, and we have the fairing removed, and the fuel tank, obviously the plastic part of the fuel tank is here, but obviously it's now exposing several more Torx 20 fasteners that we're going to need to remove to get the side panels off the tank. Okay, so before we remove the beak, we can see a, a screw here for the beak and a screw up under the underneath for the beak. Um, but there is actually a screw as well down here under this side fairing here. Now this side fairing is held on by a screw here, a screw here, both Torx 20, and a couple of screws here holding on the um, the fairing to the radiator cover and also right down inside which I will show you in detail in a moment there's a push pin which are a little bit awkward to get out um, but just so you don't forget it and, and also I'll let you know how to do it without breaking it off again interestingly this one is a Torx 20 with the positioning collar and it's short so this is again why I try to keep these in the same place or put them into a piece of expanded polystyrene and mark where they come. So upper, front, right, fairing, etc. So again, they're both got spacers on. Now we're going to need to go down inside the fairing to take the remaining two off, which are in by the radiator cover. So I'll try and get you an image of that so you can see where they are. But there's a screw here and a screw down here. Those two are holding the fairing. Now while we're under here, You'll notice that there is the screw here for the beak and of course there's one the other side so just below the horn um, the existing horn which we're going to replace well we're not going to replace but we're going to add one um, and and that's the screw there just out of interest you may see this bracket here um, i've already fitted the light bracket but i'll show you how that fits a little bit later So there's one of them, and as you can see, they're longer and got no shoulder. So again, I need to make sure I get those back in the same place. And I'll just remove the top one. Like so, and again, it's long and with no shoulder. So, oh, and there is actually still one here. I um, don't know whether you can see that. There is actually one here at the front too. It's actually holding the fairing, not the beak, as I thought it was. So remove that one. And that one is a short one. So again, we need to be careful that we get those back in the same place. So there's the fairing panel removed. Okay, so uh, we're now going to remove the beak. That means taking out these two screws here and one under the beak on both sides. So we remove this. Again, it's torque 20. The majority of these are. Um, so far, we only encountered the one at the front middle of the tank there that was not. Again, it's short, and again, it has no shoulder. Remove this one, which, like a lucky dip, once again, is short with no shoulders. Then the beak, I've done both sides now, and once you've got all of that over, the beak is actually maintained on two lugs. Um, up at the very front of the beak here underneath the headlight so this should now pull away from the bike and then forward and you then end up removing your beak quite safely okay so the next thing for removal is the uh, uh, tank side panels so again this is held on with a Torx 20 here uh, a Torx 20 here on the top by the filler cap a Torx 20 at the back uh, and a Torx 20 right down here um, hidden inside here. So now we're going to remove these screws. So as we said, one here at the uh, fuel cap, side of the fuel cap. One down here at the bottom of the tank. Again, all Torx 20. One down here in a little recess, which was covered by this little trim fairing on here is now obviously exposed and one here just where the beak was uh, covering so 
Now that will, I'm pretty sure, remove all of the screws that are needed for the side panel of the tank. Um, and just out of interest, two of these, which were the two on the top of the tank, um, have shoulders on them. They're short with shoulders. Okay, now this is the point at which I hope you can see. Uh, this unit here is obviously the radiator and the fan unit, so you can see the fan here. Um, and right in here we can see a little pin lock um, type plastic affair here. Um, what, we, what it actually consists of is the small circle you can see in the middle is a straight pin and the outer circle you can see is a, uh, a claw-like um, affair that when you push the pin in it spreads the claws on the other side. So to remove it a lot of people might try and lever the whole thing out. You'll never get it out that way in one piece. So what we're going to try and do is put a, a flat screwdriver initially underneath the neck of the pin, get the pin out just far enough to grab it with a pair of pliers, and then we'll pull the pin out, and that should allow us to take the panel off. So hopefully even I can do this in one piece. Um, you can just get in between the two pipes, the outbound and the inbound of the radiator here, and if we just use a little bit of, little bit of persuasion underneath the pin, You'll find the pin will start to come out. Don't, don't pull on any one side too hard. Just take your time. And now, I hopefully will be able to get a pair of pliers onto the neck of it and ease it out. So, sorry if the camera jerked a little there, but um, that is the pin unit. I don't know whether you can see that. Let me just take the pliers off so you can see it. You're always going to inevitably do a little bit of bending to it, but that's come out in one piece. There you can see the centerpiece. And now we should find that this will just pop out. So I can now pull that out, and you can sort of see, hopefully what that is, a little split washer. And then when this goes in the middle, it splays the behind piece which stops it from coming out and I'll just keep those two together so I don't lose them. Okay, so now we should find if I just remove the screw that I put back in just to hold it all stable, you should find now when I remove that that I should be able to remove the entire fairing piece. So now we can see on the bike the air box here, the fuel tank unit here, um, and obviously the other tank panel is still on. I'll just remove that um, because it's exactly the same as doing it this side. Okay, so we've now pretty much removed um, all of the trim. So we've now got, this is the other side of the bike now. So we've now removed the beak, obviously, which goes both sides. We've removed the tank side panels from this side. We've removed the front fairing from this side, exactly the same little... Um, lock pin went into this hole here so we've removed that that's the back of the radiator be careful you don't get anything knocked into that and we've removed the tank top cover from here and what we're now going to do or attempt to do is to remove the fuel tank or at least lift the fuel tank so we can route the wires underneath and maybe even the air box but we'll see how we get on there now just out of interest as i said to you i did fit the bracket for the GS, for the Denali lights. It's the Denali bracket. And in fact, you don't need to remove anything to fit that, but basically it goes here. So there's two holes you'll see here in your GS if you don't have the Denali fitting. So there's a, there's a hole here, um, which the bolt goes in, and obviously a hole on this side where the bolt goes in, a washer here, and then you're sent with the kit, these two black tall spacers, about two and a half to three inches long, um, they go in between and then underneath we have another washer and a 13 millimeter lock nut. Okay, so I'm actually as well going to fit a Denali horn as you know. I've gone ahead and fitted the horn. I've not connected it yet, but I have actually fitted it. Um, and hopefully you'll be able to see it up here. Um, so this is the horn unit hanging here. And you'll see it's fitted with a Denali bracket. So the, um, I don't know whether you can see that because the exposure the low sun here in winter but 
here's the bracket with an 8mm bolt. The 8mm bolt comes with the kit because it needs to be slightly longer than the one you take out. So the bracket goes in here. You've got to be very careful how you align that bracket because the clearance between the Denali horn and the forks is not much. <laughs> um, so as you can see there, it's just a few millimetres that side, maybe a little more the other side, but I might actually level that one out in a minute. The other thing that slightly concerns me, which I've taken up with Denali, um, is the clearance between the brake cable and the ABS wire here now and the bottom of the horn when the forks compress. Um, but I'm going to try and find a way of doing something with that that maybe holds that cable a little further away than it currently is. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do at minimum is to lift the tank. Um, obviously, if we want to totally take the tank away, we're going to have to disconnect the, the various, uh, obviously the tank feed, the, the breather at the top. Um, we're going to have to remove the uh, fuel gauge wires and equally on this machine it's a keyless ride so we'll need to remove the wire from the keyless tank uh, to, to allow the filler to, to un undo but let's see how we get on um, with just lifting the tank you can see here we've got two bolts that hold the tank down and uh, also the this is the seat height adjuster this is a Torx 40 and I'm pretty sure this one here is a Torx 25, it looks like the same size as the one at the front of the tank. So we're going to move, remove those now. Again, Torx 25, but they've got shoulders on, so they are different to the the one, the remaining Torx 25 that we've used at the at the front. Those ones have shoulders, so I'm quite happy for those to go here. Just so you know what all of this um, equipment is here. This is the fuse holder, so inside there you'll find the main fuse for the bike and that's held on with a, um, with a cable tie here to stop. It holds the wire tightly to it, but that also stops the unit from coming away. It doesn't matter if it comes away, it's just that's where it's parked. The fuses are actually contained within that plug. Making sure we don't go too near the wire. There we go. So that's that cut there and you can see as with every bmw unit you press the sides and that'll come out so this is just a holder this is the actual fuse box if you like and has the two main circuit fuses in it yeah so there we go it's a quite a substantial spacer same on this side There we go, so two spacers out, and then that comes away actually, so it allows the tank from underneath. So that's the seat height adjuster and the fuse holder. So now we should be able to lift the tank. It's just on two rubber mounts at the front here. We should be able to lift it away and at least there we go. So the tank is now effectively free, um, but I'm just going to rest it there a minute just so that I can see if I can route the wires underneath. Okay, so this is the Denali lights that I'm going to fit. It's the, um, it's the two series, the second series D4 lights, square lights. They've got four um, LED, 10 watt LEDs, so 40 watts each. And they have um, four torque screws that hold the bezel on, and then you can take that off and remove the lens. Now, interestingly, they come shipped with what they call a hybrid lens, and the hybrid lens has uh, two sort of um, uh, stripy plastic covers here and here, which allow you to spread the beam, and then two clear ones, which allow a, a, a far beam, but a focused beam, spots and floods. Obviously, within Europe here, we should technically have an E classification lens, so it comes with the e-classification lens, so you'll notice that all four of mine, hopefully you can see there, all four of mine are clear, so they are purely spotlights. And I very much doubt if you'll be able to see it, because we'll probably go out of focus, but down here is actually the e-mark. So um, technically in the UK, to be legal, you need to have those marks. I'm not sure anybody would even pick it up, but, uh, but let's at least start on that and see how we go. 
I'm not going to show you me hanging these because truly it's a matter of putting a 14 millimeter, uh, sorry, a 13 millimeter uh, bolt through to mount it onto the, the pre-installed bracket here. Um, and I'm going to under sling them. So hopefully when you come back to me next, I'll have both of the lights actually physically fitted and very roughly adjusted using the hex fasteners here. It is something that slightly annoys me, although this isn't bike specific, these are obviously universal, but certainly on these bike specific mounts, it sort of annoys me that the bolts that they use for them, both this and the one that they send with the uh, Denali sound bomb horn, the mounts are specific to the BMW 1200. Every fastener on a BMW is a Torx headed fastener, so they send you hex. Just gives you something else you need to carry in your toolkit. Slightly frustrating, but then I suppose there's not much they can do with the Denali lights because they are universal and could be fitted to any bike. But interestingly, 13 mil spanner size, probably something like a five or a six millimeter hex, and then I think these were T7 or T8. So a hell of a mixture on one light, but the quality of them feels really, really good. It all cable tied out of uh, all to tidy up now. I won't bore you with that. Everybody knows how to run a zip tie, but effectively that's the, the wiring from the units. As I say, it comes up through here, then it disappears down underneath the air box, underneath the tank, um, and then it re-emerges here. So it's running down the main BMW trays and it comes out here. That's the battery cable, as we said, which is going down here and, and coming into the battery. And then I've got the horn and the main the set of lights I've just connected on the right hand side of the ICU unit here. So again, it's cable tied there and it's right out of the way, nowhere in the way of the seat. It's a lovely little tray there. And I've actually run the second set of lights down the other side along here and in the tray on the other side and the other side of the tank and the other side of the airbox. So it crosses over right up at the front here by the um, steering headstock. So everything now is out at the front there and I'll, I'll put the ones that I've not got connected into the little plastic bag as I did before and tape it up as tightly as I can just to make sure there's no ingress of water. I've actually pushed the tank back on. I've not bolted it back on yet. Um, but I have pushed it back on. You can see here is where it locates on these rubber things, which are exactly the same either side. Um, and I'll start bolting the back bike back together. Once I've got it back together, I'll show you the whole lot working. I think that's probably all you need to need, and you can uh, safely install this yourself on the 1250. Just out of interest, everything that I fitted was originally listed as the 1200. So the 1200 that's certainly the latter 1200 models, the 18, 16 to 18 year models. I'm using exactly the same equipment on the 1250, so there is no difference. So um, she's all done and dusted. And you can now see that we have the Denali lights fitted and uh, everything neatly cable tied. So the first cable tied position I did was just there on the bend of the bracket. And the same, exactly the same, on the bend of the bracket here. Um, I've set the Denali lights at the moment on their lowest downward setting, only because I just feel they're a tiny bit close to the uh, turn signals. Although, as I say, you'll see in a minute that you can have them so that, and I have got them set so that this goes off when the indicator comes on through the through the smart cam. But again, just looking at the routing, uh, we go up. You can see that here. Um, along the bracket all the way along on both sides cable tied here through the hole cable tied here through the hole so none of this moves anyway because it's part of the beak so it's not part of the steering um, and then we go up behind the horn and tuck ourselves back up in the side of the beak um, which is effectively where the cables were before I've cable tied them now to the to the beak stay so that they won't um, they won't move um, I've connected the sound bomb horn so you can see here the positive cable green and the negative cable black here and rather than actually putting them on here I decided later that this does move a little um, and I don't want that to move so effectively I've put the cable up the back cable tied it to the bracket so if you can just see up here um, maybe the lights in the way but I've got a cable tie here on the the horn 
bracket which then keeps all of this stable so none of this down here um, will be flexing in any way shape or form and then I take it all the way up through static wires again wires that are connected to the to the fairing and the beak mount which of course doesn't move um, rather than anything at all to do with the brakes and the steering which can move about I'm still a little bit concerned by the gap between here and here um, but I have looked on several sites and for as good as the photos I can see that looks fairly normal what I might actually get is a little bit of rubber uh, cable tied around here which will then rest against the horn but at least it'll stop any possible bra abrasing, uh, abrading of this um, of this brake cable which uh, sorry this brake pipe which would not be a good thing I mean the beauty of all of this of course is that it does it does actually work with the standard equipment um, switches so you don't have any additional switches here on the handlebars it's all completely normal and you'll see that because the bike is as standard um, this little light tells you here down on the TFT um, this is the auto lights um, setting so obviously the sensor on the TFT is picking up that it's still daylight here so these are just daylight running lights so you can see that my headlight is just lighting the bit around the side the, the um, almost like the circular backwards C it's just lighting that as the uh, daytime running lights but you'll see that the Denali's fairly blinding there I've got to say um, but you'll see that the Denali's are on now I've got those set to 50% again you can program that through the interface of the CAN Smart so they are at 50% when the daylight running light is on and when the dip beam is on but now if I were to for example I'm going to try and stretch around to this but if I were now to switch off um, the daylight running lights so I'm effectively now on dip beam and you'll notice that they're still at the same intensity 50% if I now turn the headlight on to high beam then you'll see that the Denali's or hopefully you can see that the Denali's also increase in intensity and decrease in intensity um, I've also got them set on uh, flash to pass so if I strobe the headlight flash three times then they should strobe there we go and then switch back on so there's the lights on and if I now put the hazards on for example then you'll see the hazards run and the lamps alternate equally if I switch in any indicator on both of the lights will go off while the indicator is on and then return when the indicator goes off and that's the same obviously on both sides so you retain visibility of the turn signal indicators which of course is very important and lastly and I will only do it once um, I fitted the sound bomb horn and you should find that when I press the sound bomb horn one will get an awful lot of noise and two the light should strobe like so that's it fitting of the Denali can smart the Denali D4 series 2 lamps and the sound bomb compact all-in-one horn on a BMW R1250 GS thanks a lot